All right, joining us now to discuss is Latham Sadler, a Senate candidate for Georgia and a former lieutenant commander for the U U.S. Navy SEALs. Thanks so much for joining us, Latham. Uh, good to see you on this. I want to get your thoughts on that and in, in, um, the Pentagon's um, uh, not response, but just how they how they worded it. Uh, look, we're giving you money, um, but it's up to you of, of what you do with it. But I'm pretty sure if you loan me money, you're gonna know you're gonna want to know what I'm using your money for. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think we should have at least basic insight into how they're going to be using our, our funds and our weapons over there. I do obviously think we should be supplying and supporting the Ukrainians on this mission without putting American boots on the ground. Um, but we saw what happened in Afghanistan. I mean, tens of billions of dollars of taxpayer uh, equipment equipment that our taxpayers paid for got left to our adversaries in the Taliban. So I think we should at least have insight into how they're going to use and secure uh, this funding. Um, Ned Price spoke as well, and as far, because it does kind of get in the weeds as far as how much is being sent over, how much of it is um, of monetary value, how much of it is military aid. Uh, here's the breakdown of what he says being sent to Ukraine. Here's that. We've provided... Uh, over $2.4 billion worth of security assistance since the start of this administration, about $1.7 billion uh, over the court, over the past uh, month alone. If you add in contributions from our partners and allies around the world, more than 30 countries that have provided security assistance to Ukraine since the start of this aggression, uh, aggression that number uh, grows even higher. And I think you can look at the effectiveness of that security assistance through a number of different lenses. As I said before, uh, Russia has lost the Battle of Kiev. Uh, Latham, where are you with, with this? And, and as you remember, uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, General Milley said that this war could go on for years. If that is the case, and we're talking billions of dollars of, of, of United States funding being sent over, um, will this become the new norm? Keeping in mind that we're facing our own inflationary issues right here at home, and there are already serious talks of recession on the horizon here, uh, yet we're spending so much money. Any issue with this and where you see this going, your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, Seth. And, and look, I've sat at the, the table up there in the White House under President Trump as part of the National Security Council staff and racking and stacking the nation's priorities overseas when all these things are popping off and remaining strategic in a resource-constrained environment uh, is, is not easy. And the, and the problem that we have with the current leaders in office, especially under President Biden, is they think that we can just throw money at every problem in the world. Now, I do think it's worth investing in Ukraine, but given the mismanagement of what happened in Afghanistan, I don't, I have no trust and confidence in this administration's ability to manage our resources as a nation and achieve our objectives. And, yeah. you know, this war in Ukraine is being underwritten by China on the other side of this thing. And so I really want to see much more uh, coming out of other allies in the region as far as funding the Ukrainians. Uh, really quickly, I want to go, I can't uh, ignore this. I know that you're running for Senate in Georgia. Hard pivot, right? But back to politics. Uh, running against Herschel Walker, I understand this, uh, that you tweeted that you think he is afraid to debate you. Is that true? And can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I mean, I, look, I'm a Georgia Bulldog, uh, but Herschel was my childhood football hero. But since he's gotten into this race, we've had multiple forums and debates. He's a no-show. They have an empty podium for him. I mean, he's, he's, he's running scared. He's, he's running out of bounds. And it's been disappointing because I thought Herschel Walker was a competitor. Uh, but he's moved over here from Texas and is expecting to be handed a United States Senate seat, basically doing nothing. And when I meet voters across this state, they beg to differ. Voters in Georgia want a fighter, someone who's going to get up in the United States Senate who won't be like Raphael Warnock. And when you're not showing up for debates, how are you going to make the case that you're going to beat Raphael Warnock in November? Here in Georgia, we have runoffs. If the front runner doesn't clear 50 percent, top two go to a runoff. I'm going to bring Herschel Walker into a runoff. And the number two guy in Georgia usually wins. I'm going to knock him off, and then it's on to hold Raphael Warnock accountable for the bag of goods that he sold Georgians last year. 
All right, we'll leave it right there. Latham Sadler uh, running for Senate there in Georgia. Latham, good to see you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.